This week the church is before us, the Sermon on the Mount, and we ask for the grace to penetrate the mystery of these words which invite us to true beatitude, to purity of heart. We ask for preparation that our hearts may receive in stillness the word and the grace of this encounter. Heaven, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of God, Lord, have a mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have a mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have a mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, Grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. From Paul, appointed by God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and from Timothy, one of the brothers, to the church of God at Corinth, and to all the saints in the whole of Anchea, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, a gentle Father and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows, so that we can offer others in their sorrows the consolation that we have received from God ourselves. Indeed, as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, so through Christ does our consolation overflow. When we are made to suffer, it is for your consolation and salvation. When instead we are comforted, 
this should be a consolation to you, supporting you and patiently bearing the same sufferings as we bear. And our hope for you is confident, since we know that sharing our sufferings, we will also share our consolations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me, from all my terrors he set me free. Taste and see that the Lord is good, look towards him and be radiant, let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called the Lord heard him, and rescued him from all his distress. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn. They shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right. They shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful. They shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart. They shall see God. Happy the peacemakers. They shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. This is how they persecuted the prophets before you. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is the new Moses, and it is from this high place that he teaches with authority. Sitting down is the posture of the teacher. We have in our universities a chair. We have in our cathedrals a cathedra.
we notice that in the progression of discourses in this sermon, there will be a juxtaposition of the Law of Moses with its completion. And the sense is given by the Supreme Lawgiver, the Son of God, the Eternal Word. The Old Testament was our pedagogue, and already it croissant off a part of humanity for a pure monotheistic theology and practice. But we are given the Incarnation and therefore the knowledge of the Father, and this is what we specifically are asked to practice, and in so doing to practice also all that went before in its deeper meaning. In a Catholic culture, because massively people were baptized and therefore were Christians, we forgot the specifically evangelical nature of our faith. We became normal. Society was not all that different sometimes. However, having said that, there is a difference in a society in which the Gospel has, over the centuries, had its effect with that of other cultures in which that is not true. For, for instance, charity and mercy are not necessarily the hallmarks of Muslim culture, even though there is great faith in Allah. Therefore, charity is the last will and testimony of the Lord and the bottom line of the Sermon on the Mount, and is itself the interpreter of all others. So when in a situation one asks oneself, what does charity command? But the charity of the Lord is specific, eightfold, when it comes to the definition of beatitude. There is a paradox already in this eightfold system. Each one is completely opposed to the norm. In classical culture, the writings of the philosophers do not glorify our value of humility as such. On the contrary, dignity is underscored. And the whole system to defend it is there, including suicide, as the noble way out in many circumstances. And has what to think of the Stoic resistance. We are called upon to be different. And that means concretely, not in the norm of what is out there as behavioural pattern. A certain heroic going further is there. Let's look just at three issues briefly in these Beatitudes. One is peacemaking. We can go through life making an issue of everything, or we can go through life being mediators of peace and relative tranquility in a situation which could be explosive. We're only here once, it's not worth it, making an issue of everything. And the same event can call forth a negative reaction or a peaceful one. Gentleness. In Italian, la mitezza. Mitis is gentle in Latin, and it is something to be cultivated in that noble sense in which the Lord had it and transmitted it. We do not react on the same level and tone to everything coming at us from a person who has the problem. In doing the contrary, it becomes our problem and we become contaminated. Dignity and gentleness before all that's coming at us 
without changing personality, accepting things, which also is linked with that poverty of spirit which is the opening of them all. I was once asked what it meant. It's not that complicated. It's the attitude of soul that is in its reality. Much of our pain comes from a false ownership of what is outside our soul, including events. The person who is in his truth knows he has no rights, and so everything is received, even the unpleasant. Again, it makes for peace, for much energy is lost in unhelpful fighting against the cosmos. Be grateful for the first sacrifice in yours, be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Who will accept the sacrifice of your needs, for the praise and glory of his name? Who will in the good of all his holy church? Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable location to you, and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him we have, we have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we Yeah. Uh -huh.
and the channels of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice of spotless victims. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who come before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who are sinners, hoping your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Thomas, Thomas, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, we sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipsum et in ipsum, est ibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, A peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who never reign forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
called the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be God is God, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God in Him. Let us pray. <coughs> May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. and comment him on this his vigil that he will protect us, protect Ireland, of which he is co-patron, protect our families, our friends, and our vocation, and lead us unto the glory that was conquered by him and his mighty band here in this area and in Iona in Scotland. Who was there who has trod before this ancient path we trod of you? The silent feet of many more, 
Thou's done best guide us, Thou's done best guide us. And when the tears of many years, the secrets kept from mortal ears, are known again where thy word stills, Thou still not listening, Thou still not listening. For thou dost know the solitude that held the unknown beatitude, beheld and held in quietude, and still dost ponder, and still dost ponder. For thou didst call and calling heard the distant echo of this world, call on and call till nothing stirred in dying in dying wonder. Yet would at times there something more, when now thou art with ancient love, burn still and whisper from above, Faint not, we conquer, Faint not, we conquer.